We added the ability to take a photo. It displays in the info box. Not that great. So we'll fix that with CSS. And then also in our table, once we start to add more comics and the table gets more populated, then it really becomes more difficult to read the data here because it's not very user friendly. By default, the table is just black and white, kind of plain, not too useful. So what we're going to do is uh, style some things with CSS. We haven't worked with CSS very much um, because jQuery Mobile um, does a lot of the hard work for us. And then if we need to change colors and such, we have the theme roller. But let's go over to our index.css file. index.css, let's see, we've got our font stuff right there, button after, cropping, fixing transparent background, okay, let's just go to the end, we'll add some new CSS at the end. I want to write some CSS that will uh, change the size of the image. Now the image that is appearing in that box is right here. Or actually, no, not right there. Where is it at? It displays view comic. Now oh, here it is. So the, uh, the image that displays in the pop-up is right there. So we have several ways to affect what we are targeting here. Um, we could use the example of what we've written before in the JavaScript, or we can also add a class or an ID and such. I'm going to write both examples, and then you can pick which one you like better. So what I mean is, if we've got the div view comics info oops view comics info space paragraph equaling 6 the seventh paragraph space img I think that's slightly different for CSS. It's not a valid pseudo class. Hmm, okay, I've got to check on that one. So, note, oops, since we're in CSS, the notes are different here. Um, we can use a selector, a CSS selector. Targeting the seventh paragraph in a certain div. Or we can apply a class or ID to the element. The example I was going to write up here, I'm going to comment it out. To compare it with dot image now I'm comparing and contrasting these because this is very specifically say an image in a paragraph sixth paragraph 
in a div. And here we're saying anywhere in our project where the class of image, of comic image is attached, do the following. The following is going to be to set the width of 100%. So both are trying to do the same thing, and this is what we see with programming, that there's many ways to do the same thing. There's no inherently right or wrong answer. You can decide what's right or wrong based on your own criteria in terms of which is more elegant, which is more efficient, which makes more sense, which do I like better. It's all, it's all valid. I would say this shorter one is the one I'm going to go with because, again, it's shorter. It's less to type, less to misspell. But just as is right here, this wouldn't work. <clears throat> Perhaps as opposed to something up here, where we're specific this way, this, this would work in theory compared to this one. Right now, this one wouldn't work. Why, why do you think this one wouldn't work right now? We haven't assigned it. We haven't set the class of comic image to that particular image in question. We've said wherever there is a class of comic image, change the width of that to 100% to fit inside of its box. I'm trying to make this image fit a lot nicer. Well, we haven't applied that class to that image. So we'll go to our HTML file, and we'll apply the image. Or we'll apply the class. Paragraph image source class comic image. So now we've assigned the class to that image. If I show this side by side, So now it should work. We've got a, uh, a CSS. Uh, we've got a CSS selector. It's trying to find. It's trying to select something that's got a class. Dot is the class. Pound is the ID. Something with that class. And there it is. That's the something. It's got the class. It finds it. It styles it. What I also want to do here is. Create a drop shadow. Add a drop shadow to the image. And so there is a box dash shadow property. As I'm writing it here, it may pop up to say, well, how does this work? You have you have the um, the various properties of how a shadow works. For the moment, let's just write to this. Uh, 5 pixels, space 5 pixels, space 5 pixels, space black. The syntax is X offset, Y offset, blur, and color can be transparent. So here I'm saying move the shadow five pixels over to the right, move it five pixels down, blur it five pixels, and make it a black shadow. Now, because it can be transparent, the syntax would be there in a different way. RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.5. Transparent colors, 
RGBA. So a value of red, a value of green, a value of blue, and a value of transparency, which is alpha, which goes from uh, 0 to 1. How many numbers are there between 0 and 1? Infinite. Because you take half of 1, and it's 1 half. You take half of a half, it's 1 quarter. You take 1 half of a quarter, it's 1 eighth. 1 half of an eighth is 1 sixteenth on and on and on and on. So there's an infinite number of numbers between two numbers in the theory. Uh, but here we can use values more tangibly like if I've, if I've got you know 0, 0.0 this is the color black red, green, blue set to nothing which is black and it's also invisible. It's a black color but invisible. If I have it set to 1 it's a black color fully visible. I set it to 0 0.5, it's half visible, and then you know, 0.25 is one quarter visible. You could do you know, 0.24, but then at that point, that, that's way too nitpicking. I usually think in terms of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.1, or 0 0.0. Those are different enough. There's not so much of a difference between 0 0.20 and 0 0.25, or even 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, 10 units, but it's still so vague, so I would do 25% units. So we'll see how it looks like, but this is creating a box shadow. Trick a glow around an object has zero offsets. That would be box shadow zero zero some amount of blur and then some color. So this will be a shadow that is moved over to the right and down, but zero zero is a shadow that appears right behind the object, with some glow that appears out, some blur that comes out out of the object, color pink or transparent, whatever, and it's going to be like a glow around the object. Here, just to make it complete, we'll say um, grow or shrink the image in question 100% the size of its parent. having that width of 100%. Right now, my image, I'm saving it as, you know, 1,024, whatever the size. It's, it's a little too big for this box, the, the info pop-up screen. In my case, I need to shrink it down a little bit. With setting it to 100%, it should know to shrink to fit 100% of the container, the parent container, whatever value that'll be. And that'll change then depending on the size of the of the device. On a nice big device like this, it'll pick some value and it'll and it'll fit. On a smaller device, it'll still pick some value of 100% and fit in the box. So we don't have to set a height because one or the other. Once one or the other is set, the other one automatically sets in proportion. Setting one dimension sets the other automatically. in proportion. But you could then set a height of 95, and it'll stretch it, but you, you don't want to do that because it, um, it, um, it'll distort it. It'll look odd if it looks too squished or too stretched.
take a quick look at it now then save everything we we work with several files remember to save all view it on your on your browser or device and um, see if you get that image shrunk down properly has anyone tried to do the camera with with the web browser have you tried changing instead of device to the browser you can kind of do it it's interesting it lets you load up the image from your computer to get a sort of a result but best results come from the device Okay, so the, there we go. On the a moment ago, the uh, photo was going off the edge of the off the edge of the pop-up box, and now that it's set to one hundred percent, it automatically knows to fit. And with that little drop shadow, it looks kind of nice. It looks like it's floating off of the off of the background. That's optional. That's just a little bit of flair adding to it not required but I think it looks nice one more piece of flair here oh before I uh, forget one thing here just out of curiosity this is interesting the original version of the CBDB project from last month was approximately 827 kilobytes less than one megabyte a month later it's up to 65 66 megabytes so again, that's showing that your project is getting bigger. Size on disk is just depending if it's saved on a Windows or a Mac or USB drive with NTFS or XFAT or whatever. So 7 megabytes here compared to 239 megabytes. So see how the, the app has, has grown at an exponential rate as we've added more images, more plugins, more code. It started off as a little 1 megabyte thing, and now it's 66 times larger. We still have a little bit more to add to it, so just wanted to show that. But what I wanted to do with more CSS here, this is another one that will be optional. Rounded corners on our picture. Syntax. Either set all four corners at once or each corner individually. And that works with border dash radius. I want to set all four corners at 25 pixels. for at once. Another way to do it is we can say um, 5px space 10px. And what that does is the top and bottom set to 5, left right set to 10. So there is a space here. We're saying the top and the top and bottom uh, corners give them five pixels of roundedness. And then the other ones 10 pixels. And another way to do that I'm putting these in the comments in the comment tags of course uh, that's the valid code there plus comments if you want to keep the valid code remove the comments and, and all of that but then we've also got border radius setting all the values let's say 5 
12, 2, and um, 99. So this is top, top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left. Four corners. Let's set the four corners up to get it really interesting curves on on the box. On the picture. I'll keep it simple that all four corners will be 25, so that applies then to all four corners, they all get the same roundedness. I view that result, it's just a little bit of extra flourish, a little uh, roundness around the picture. I kind of like it without roundness looking at it right now. I'll see, I'll compare it with roundness in a moment. And then I'll show you a trick because we can use the web browser, as we're saying, we can use the web browser to, to debug our app a bit, for example, CSS. As soon as I load this up on my project, on my device, I'll show you what I, what I mean. Maybe I'm trying to figure out the perfect value, the perfect color, the perfect roundness. I can have the web browser help me figure that out. But first, so I'm going to view the comic right there. It's got some roundness in the corners. Looks OK. I, I can't decide if I like the square or the round. So what I can do is I can play with those values in the web browser. Remember, you can use the web browser F12, go to More Tools, Remote Devices. In my currently attached device, Inspect. So that's what that's looking like here. It's got the roundness, it's got the drop shadow, so I can use the Elements Inspector to find the image. Remember this, we can use this um, Select an Element, and I can go off and find the particular element in question, like the image. And it shows here, in my case, this image, its source has been set its class of comic image over here in my CSS file, line 83, is where I've got my definition for that. The five pixels and the color are all there, which I can change. Let's say I want it more obvious, 25 pixels, 25 pixels. And now there's a bigger drop shadow going off of the edge there. Or maybe I want to do that there's a... glow. Uh, not too obvious there. There it is. So you can play with these values to figure out the perfect value and then save it or set it for real in, in Visual Studio. Even this about the border radius, what I was saying with, I'm playing with 25 pixels there. What if I put um, 99 pixels? And there it is. Oh, it's the top left and the top right. So 99 pixels rounded a lot over here, 25 pixels in the corner here. 
So it seems to be opposite corners, not top and bottom. I'll, I'll fix that. But here, using the element inspector to figure out these perfect values and then apply them in Visual Studio. So if you've got two values, it's actually top and oh, top left, bottom right. Or then top right, bottom left, top right. So out of, out, of this, out of these three CSS properties that we've set with box shadow and border radius, the only one that I would say is like the important one is width, because our picture was too big, it wasn't fitting in the box that, that corralled it. Box shadow and border radius, they're just fun, frivolous things, they're not necessary. I like how it looks, it's not necessary for it to work, for the, for the device to work, so there was one utilitarian property and the others where it just flourishes. What I want to do next is utilitarian. I want to style my table. This table uh, needs to be set up so that it's much more readable. So we'll go back to our CSS code. CSS to style the table of comics. So if if I hadn't if I if I don't guide you to the answer, hopefully the way you would figure this out is based on what we've seen so far, we need to have some sort of selector, some sort of ID or class, or some way to select something to alter the CSS properties. So the table where the comics appears, I need to find if there's either some sort of tag or class or ID or some sort of anchor that I can latch onto. I like calling it a, as an anchor, but technically a, a selector. We have a way to select the table displaying the comics. If we look at the JavaScript under, I guess, show comics table, show comics table is where we create the table which is inside of a paragraph, and it then creates a table row by row and draws the table on screen. That table gets written by a HTML method. It's written to L div show comics table. In the HTML file, Actually, one more thing. Um, L div show comic table in the HTML file comes from line fifty one. So L, L div show comics table comes from way up here, line 51. L div show comics table comes from an element with an ID of div show comics table. This is another example where there's not quite a wrong or right answer. There's just a way how are we going to select or target the thing in question, the thing we want to affect. So in the CSS, 
So I'm writing the comment here. If we had table, curly braces, style. Well, that would, all, that would apply to every table that exists in, in the project. Applies to every table in our project. There's no dot, there's no pound, there isn't anything extra special. With, with no extra character, it means a tag. Applies to every table tag in our project. Okay, well, maybe we, we gave an ID to the table. So pound comics table. And then we add some style. Applies to only one table with an ID. Because that's the nature of the of the IDs. Then class dot comics table. Applies to every instance of a table with that class. Let's say, for whatever reason, I don't want to apply a class or an ID. We can easily do that in the JavaScript when we're creating the table right here. We just add a class. But let's say, for whatever reason, reason we can't. So we need a way, then, to create a selector that targets a table but not just every single table, the table in that spot. Well, that one is governed by it being inside of a div, right? Div show comics table, space table, applies to technically any table. but specifically in another element with that unique ID. Applies to any, applies to table in a unique ID. This is the way we'll go because this is enough of a, this is enough of specificity. We're specific enough in this code here, that it's not going to hit every table in our project. It's going to hit a table space in this element with that ID. And you can confirm that over here on the HTML because we've got div show comics table. We've got a div with a unique ID. Our comics go here. A table is created inside of that div, and that div has that unique ID. There's nothing else in the whole project with that ID. So that'll work for us here. And there's other ways to do it too, and if you have another way, it'll probably work. If it works, it's a good, it's a good way, so go ahead and do that one if you like too. But here I'm saying, this is the way we'll do this. Find an element with that ID, then find a table inside of that element, and then we'll style it. Background color. Let's start with this is this is one of the things when we get to the last assessment. Some of these things about these colors. I'm just gonna pick some colors and they're not gonna be that great. Hopefully you will pick better colors. Um, other things like like the the compression of the J of that JPEG, I had it at five. I hope you don't keep it at five for the final assessment. It'll look terrible. Question, Mauricio? Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, do you mean in the HTML file here? Yeah. Add a class here. We can add. We can do classes and IDs to anything. Sure, that'll work. Uh, thing. So yeah, we can put a class and an ID. Although in this case, it doesn't do anything different. I think. But if we had attached this class of thing to several things, then it would apply what we're about to do. Okay, so a background color for the table, Alice Blue. We will say the width of the table will be 75%, so not have it stretch out all the way from side to side, but a good amount. Border, or not border, uh, margin auto. So background color, that one's obvious. Put a color behind the table. With, based on what we've already looked at, OK, this, this table is going to stretch out to fill approximately 75% of the screen here. Right now, in my case, it's filling up like 5% because of the size of the comic. If you write names of comics and stuff longer, the table grows. It's not consistent. I want it to be consistent with a value there, width of 75. Now then the problem is, it's going to be a table that leans over here to the left. So there's going to be 25% empty. By setting margin auto, this is a way for it to automatically center itself. A common trick to auto center an element. Because margin is a way to set, I want a one inch margin here, and here, and here, and here. We can set the margins around the edges, give me some space. If I know that this tablet is x pixels, I can say margin left and right 100. So then it's centered. But if then I'm landscape, 100 might not, might not be centered anymore. Or even if I'm not landscape, if I'm portrait size here, and if I'm on a smaller phone, 100 pixels might get it off the edge of the screen. So margin of auto will automatically find enough pixels left and right to center the element, the table. OK, before we do this, let's go back to our JavaScript file. You can search for border. Line 470 or so. Temporarily, we had a border of 1. In your function show comics table, when we create the table, just to be able to see it, we put a border of 1. And we have a better way to style and control the table through CSS. So I'm going to say let's not add any border there. Add border one attribute temporarily to view the table borders. then style them better and style the whole table better via CSS. So if I were to view the table at this point, I wouldn't see any of the edges, any of the cells, anything. The border would be, would be gone. If we don't set a border attribute, the table edges are invisible. Well, no problem. We can style them a lot better via CSS. Let's go back to the CSS file. I was about to add here, border. The syntax here is size, space, style, 
space color. A, an actual color like red or black. So we've got size, space, style, space, color. And as you're as you're writing these, I think it pops up to give you suggestions, right? Space there, dashed line, a series of square ended dashes. Dotted. A series of round dots. Double, etc. Groove. Looks as if it were carved in the canvas. This is typically achieved by creating a shadow from the two colors that are slightly lighter, lighter and darker than the border color, which in my case is red. I was just going to do a plain old solid, a single line segment. But you have uh, all of these possibilities. And this is another example where, uh, for the final assessment, and I'm going to put it in the documentation, but this sort of like creative stuff, if it's the same boring colors that I chose, if it's the same, you know, simple things that I did here, you didn't add your uniqueness to it, that might affect your grade. You want to set, do I really want the 25 pixel border? Do I really want the shadow to be that color? Do I really want a groove? So for the moment, At the moment, I'm going to put something there. Now, uh, for some quick testing, I think it might be easier to test on the on the on the simulator here instead of the device. Uh, the device was for taking the photo and scanning the barcode, but to kind of test this color, the CSS stuff, you can perhaps do it a little bit faster in the browser. I want to see what it looks like so far. View comic. The table is centered based on the on the size of this device. See, when I stretch it out, it goes 75% of that size. I go landscape, 75%. I put it. I put a color, Alice blue. Kind of looks gray in uh, in my monitor and projector, but that's a very, very, very light blue. I added a border of groove, five pixels, and it looks like kind of three-dimensional. And I can use the browser to inspect the elements and maybe find some perfect colors and, and play with it here before I commit to a color. So if you were to set some sort of background color that was dark, like Dodger Blue, you probably want to set then a color of the text that would complement it. Text color. Should contrast a background color next property here word wrap so 
specifies whether the UA may break within a word to prevent overflow when an otherwise unbreakable string is too long to fit. So we're going to add word wrap to say break word. An unbreakable word may be broken at an arbitrary point if there are no otherwise acceptable breakpoints. So we have all of these possibilities of word wrap about when is a sentence too long to break it to the next line. We have all of those, like hyphenated and so forth. Normal is the default. I'm going to say break word because what could happen is that sometimes you have a really long name of a comic and it would overflow your table it would jump to the next cell. So by setting word wrap of break word, it should automatically cut it so that it doesn't go over the edge of your cell. Breaks any word that's too long in your cells. Here's a property that is important because of jQuery Mobile. Oops, sorry, not text align, text shadow. Text shadow none. This uh, negates the built in jQuery Mobile text drop shadow jQuery Mobile has some subtle drop shadows in certain times in our text. And one of them is in the titles, especially the headings in a table. And so we can say, don't put drop shadows of text in this element. In this table, in this div, put no drop no text shadows onto the text of this element So I've got a background color, I've got the border color, etc. Um, this very first row, I would like it to stand out compared to these other rows. Uh, what, are, what are the things that are in this first row? Head, headings, yes. They're the headings of, of this table. So I want to target the headings of this table via CSS. Okay, so we'll start the same here saying pound div comics table space table space th. Now we're saying if we read from right to left, find a heading of a table in a table in this div. So what this does is selects so CSS rule or CSS selector targeting headings in a certain table. We've already identified it's a certain table because of the one up here that part there, but now we're saying headings of that. And in this case I also want to add a background color. I've got an interesting color here, Rebecca Purple. 
and because I want that to be visible, the default would be black text in the table. At the top here, I've said color azure, so that'll be that'll be white text that gets added to every cell and row and everything. Uh, I want to change it here, so we'll do color of text here, aquamarine. Again, I'm just choosing kind of weird colors that don't really look that nice. You'll need to put nicer colors in your own version. This result should only target cells that are marked as TH, which is usually the first row. So now only that first row has been styled that way. And that comes from, from when we've created the, the table. Here we've said, we're going to create a table, the first row will have headings, THs, so all of those get that. Maybe the text is a little too close. Maybe the text is too close to the edge, adding some padding will separate the text from the edge. Add space between the text and the edge of the cell. space there now. Okay, so CSS selector targeting a row in a certain table. Based on what we've done so far, can you help me write that? What am I trying to target? What's that? What's the full line? Mm -hmm. The ID of the of the div space table tr table row. But actually, this is targeting every row of a certain table. What's that? Exactly. We want to target only certain rows, um, not every row. So first we will do the um, so as targeting every even row in a certain table. So we're going to add to here, colon, oh here's one version to do it, colon nth. Um, when this pops up we have various selectors. Um, the last one um, of a certain type or matching a certain thing. So nth you know, like first, second, third, fourth, thirteenth, nth. Um, we want to select every even 
row. So we have the ability to do here to do it here with type. Nth of type. Rows that are even or rows that are odd. So nth dash of type. Start with even. So now we've got a selector targeting every even row in a certain table. Let's set a background color here. Well, we'll say for zebra striping. Alternating colors. So background color. Say I'm going to do it via RGB to 0, 050, 200. Color of the text will be ghost white. So if I've got, you know, seven rows, this will automatically select the even ones, 2, 4, and 6, and set a background color. Then once I've got, you know, two more rows that of comics being added, it will automatically know to further select the next types. Something very similar is what we need for odd. I'm just going to copy that whole chunk and paste it because the only thing that needs to change are the details, specifically nth of type odd. And I will set it to background color RGBA, comma 0 0.5. Trick. Or tip, uh, use the original color, but 50%. So instead of deciding which colors match, you can take your starting color, even, and then just make it 50% or 25%, as transparent as the original, and that will serve to alternate colors. So that result is that there's an odd and an even color alternating automatically with the three rows that I have now, and if I add several more. There's the word wrap so that it doesn't go over the edge. I'll save another comic. Snap a pick doesn't seem to do anything here, but if you go back to Visual Studio, it might pop up as a simulator here. You're trying to snap a photo, choose a file.
question. Is there a way to make the, the image always come out vertically? To make the image come out what? So if you took the photo and it's sideways, um, that has to do with a property of the Cordova plugin. Uh, for some devices, it doesn't know the orientation. So there is a property in the camera over here about orientation that you might need to set. Let me see here. Correct orientation. Right here. Uh, when you when we set the quality and all of that stuff, try adding one more property of correct orientation true, and that should keep your your image correct. So you can kind of use the simulator t to take a photo. You just have to go back to Visual Studio where it's trying to simulate taking a photo. And so here I, I, I use the classic little koala photo. I attached it to the comic here. Now I've got more data in my table, and then it automatically alternates zebra striping. Lastly, what I want to do with this with CSS, uh, these speech bubbles, uh, you can we can resize those. They might be a little bit small on the device. Um, they're a, kind of a small target perhaps to try to tap on so we can resize we can resize those those uh, icons are being created in the JavaScript when we create a cell in our in our for loop that creates row by row there's an icon that's being created right there that particular code represents that speech icon. We attached a class to it so that via JavaScript we can make that an active clickable thing. It's got a class. Classes can be used for CSS as well. Let's say CSS to style the icon in the comic table. It's a class, so it's .btn show comics info. That should be enough for it to work. Um, because this class, we've only we've used it in all of these cells in the um, in the table. We haven't used it anywhere else. But in theory, this might be too generic in that it will apply everywhere. Even like if we have, for example, in the options screen, for some reason we have a class attached to a button in the option screen, this would target it too. So this could be any element. 
with a class of btn show comics info. <clears throat> You can also do it as td dot btn show comics info. Now in this case, no space. And it's very important to not have a space. We're saying only a cell td with the class attached. Whereas before, these spaces were sort of like saying, there's a table inside of that div, an element inside of an element, a descendant. If we were to have put a space here, this would cause something different to happen. We would say uh, there could be a paragraph that this is attached to. But I don't want to target that. I want to target the actual cell with the class. That's what we did in the JavaScript. We're saying this cell has a class attached to it. So in CSS, it would be written in that way, with no space. This cell has that class attached to it. In our case, either one of these should work fine. Maybe I'll go for the more specific one as the one I'm going to use. And what I want to do here is font size. Something very obvious, 2M. And I'm going to text align it to the center. Those little icons are technically text, so we can govern them by the sizes, by uh, CSS that can target the size of text. So I'm going to make it very obvious here. This is an example where I, I made it way too big. You're going to need to pick a better size. Here's 2M, and then that little bubble will get centered in the cell. way too obvious. We might choose something a little smaller, 1.25 or something. But here it is at 2M's, a nice big target. It obviously looks too big on the browser, but I look at it on a real device. Part of the point of that is uh, you don't realize how big your fingers are when you try to, until you try to tap on something. So if the target's a little too small, it causes frustration in the user. They're making it a little bit larger so that they can definitely hit it. comics here. It's still way too big, but you get the idea. Uh, there's the row, there's the icon, very obvious. Tap that and then it loads it up there. Zebra striping, I'll save another comic. code. 
take a photo. Save the comic, view the comic. Yep, so I got the, the new comic, the barcode, the photo, it all fits there. Zebra striping with a brand new row. It knows even and odd automatically. First row is special because those are headings. And so we did a little bit of polish with CSS. More can be done, of course, but for the moment we'll uh, we'll pause at that point. We'll take a uh, one more break. Confirm this all works. When we come back, we'll do a little bit more. Um, we're back at 8.40, and then we'll continue the lecture. So I'll put my code into the folder up to this point, and then we'll uh, take a break, and we'll be back at oh, not 8.40, 8.50, and then we'll go on. One-minute break.